Now we want to add a subdirectory, or subfolder. In this case we'll have one for Austin Powers. He's a world traveler, super spy, travels the world defending truth and justice. So he may benefit from a roaming user profile. Now we want to carefully edit permissions on this. Um, he's going to require full permissions to be able to write to it and read from it for his desktop settings uh, to get that across the network. But we don't really want to give other users any permission on his desktop. This is going to be his personal desktop, so we want to edit the ACES on the DACL here. And we'll have to deal with a couple of issues. We'll have to deal with um, inheriting permissions or inheritable permissions. Um, we'll have to remove that, propagate that. We'll have to add Austin Powers. Let's, let's go ahead and add Austin Powers here. Um, I'm going to go into advanced first and we'll look at users. Let's go ahead and edit our permission system here. See where it says include inheritable permissions from this parent's object? When you see a box that's grayed out, uh, like this, these permissions are inherited from a parent object on the child object. So users inherits all of these because the parent folder, in this case roaming users up here, has been granted all permission to the domain users uh, group. So what we want to do is, you know, to keep other users from being able to access his personal desktop, we're going to remove those permissions. I'll uncheck that box. When I do notice, I can copy all the current permissions on the DSL, I can, or I can remove them, or I can cancel. Um, if I remove them, then I would have to add those users back. I'm just going to say copy, but then I'll be free to break the inheritance, so to speak, if I want. And then we can also say replace all existing inheritable permissions and all descendants. That would be if there were child objects nested inside of these folders. In this case, they're not, but I, you know, I might choose to check that as well. And we'll go ahead and go out of here. And notice now they're not gray, but they're black. So if we were to edit them, we now have the option of deselecting them. So I want to keep administrators with full control uh, or access. I want to add Austin Powers. And it's very important that he has full permissions, and not just read, but he'll need write capability on his desktop to be able to modify and change things, and at least read capability to be able to load his wallpaper and things like that in his roaming profile. And then I'm going to remove this, um, in this case the users, the main users group. So now only Austin Powers and an occasional IT administrator or a member of administrators can access that particular folder for the roaming profile. Today we want to create a roaming user profile. So one of the first things that we'll need uh, to do is let's go ahead and create a folder that we can use to reassign our roaming users uh, desktops and backgrounds and information to. Now recall that a roaming user profile is useful for if you have users who move around the network and they log on multiple workstations. Um, make a directory here called roaming users. Uh, you know, in this case, what it allows them to do is whatever workstation they log in on on the network, they'll get their desktop, their shortcuts and application settings and things. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it for every user on the network because it can consume a great deal of bandwidth, copying the information back and forth across the network. But if you have a few users who travel quite a bit, such as users in your IT department, um, then they, they log in from you know various multiple workstations throughout the course of the day, this could be a very useful feature. So one of the things we want to do, um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and leave this group on here, the DACL uh, users, but we want to edit it and give them full permission just because we're not sure, you know, who's going to be logging in and using this. We'll create subdirectories in this one directory or folder, and we want to, you know, want them to have the appropriate permission on their folder. So domain users, anyone who's an authenticated user in, in the domain, will have permission on this folder. And we, let's go ahead and share it. Advanced sharing. We'll share this folder. Again, we're going to remove everyone that's a little bit less secure. Let's add domain users. And we'll give domain users full permission. And now that that's shared, let's just go check the UNC real quick. So our host name is Sarah, and there's Roman users. So we've tested that it's shared. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is go get the UNC path. And by that I mean the network path. Um, so the resource locator or path of that would be if I typed in the host name of the machine, I would go to roaming users and Austin Powers. And here's the path that I get. I'll enabled 
I made my address bar visible here, but um, backslash backslash Sarah, the host name or you know file server name, roaming users and Austin Powers. It's very important because you want to create a relative path to a roaming user profile, not an absolute path. An absolute path would be like C colon the drive loader partition. The problem with that is not every machine is going to be the same, and the profile is not going to be on the local machine. It's going to be on a file server. So we have to tell the user account when that user logs in to go fetch the profile from a file server on the network. And this is where it would be, or the folder where that would be. So I'm just going to copy that, uh, that UNC there. And we'll close Windows Explorer. We're going to open Active Victory Users and Computers. And we'll look at creating sort of a full user profile here. Let's go to Northern Hemisphere. We'll open up the Austin Powers user account. And we want to go to Profile. And notice Profile Path here. Here's where I actually want to set up my roaming profile path. And if I had a logon script, I could set that up as well. And another interesting or fun thing, common thing that people do, for a home folder, um, connect Z2. And we could, in this case, Austin Powers and Let's make a, a subdirectory there called home. Let's do that real quick. So let's open up Explorer. And we'll go computer. And let's go to programming users, Austin Powers. We'll make a subdirectory called home there. Okay, now let's log in as Austin Powers on our 2008 server. Notice a little message there, please wait for the user profile service. In this case, we're still logging on locally on this machine, but it's being his desktop has been moved to a different location. And in this way, it'll be accessible from any workstation or server on the network. So let's make a few modifications here from the default just so we can see the difference. We'll change it to black. That's kind of mysterious. Nice black background there. Um, let's make a few other changes here. We'll put, let's put, why don't we put him on the classic desktop there. So we'll go to classic view and let's go to taskbar and start. And Austin Paris, he likes kind of that classy menu. And let's say he wants to display his log off and doesn't want to use personalized menus. So you can kind of see what's going on. So now this is pretty much his desktop. And then we'll move a few things. Let's say we like everything over here. Move a few things over here. Alright, so this is Austin Powers desktop. And now we're going to go ahead and log out. And now remember, we set up Austin Powers desktop on the 2008 server. Now we've moved to a different location across the network. We're on a Windows Vista Ultimate client or workstation. And we're going to log in. So we're several buildings away or floors away or halfway around the planet. But we want to get our, you know, Austin Powers wants to get his desktop settings and configuration and access to programs and folders. He can do that now with this roaming user profile. So go ahead and log in and welcome now notice Vista okay now Vista is applying even though this desktop was set up on a different computer um, and I'm logging into a completely different workstation it's the same desktop it's not the default Vista but it's the modified one with the black background the moved icons and such and so anything I do to this desktop um, on this workstation will be saved across the network when I log out and then on the next workstation I log in, or the next server, I'll have my same desktop and my same configuration settings. So again, I'll log off Austin Powers. and Now Vista will just, again, copy those uh, settings or modifications and changes across the network. And again, if I log in, I move across the network, I go back onto the 2008 Enterprise server. And from a completely different machine, you know, in a completely different location, I'm still going to have the same desktop. Those changes I made when I was logged into Vista are now reflected on the Windows 2008 Enterprise server.